Hi everybody. Today, Rado runs through Galaxy Defenders, which is a cooperative miniatures tactical battle warfare game all about human soldiers fighting off alien invaders on Earth. And it's on Kickstarter right now for about another week. So if you're interested, you really want to jump on it pretty quick, there's links for the Kickstarter in the show notes, in the video notes. But they have actually sent me a prototype of the game. Very rough, just you know, really hastily thrown together uh, pieces. Doesn't represent the final quality of the game at all. In fact, I won't actually be using miniatures. I'll just be using these little cardboard chits that they have included for everybody. Um, although the real game comes with some really gorgeous miniatures. I mean, just look at this guy. They're actually not plastic. They're some kind of metal alloy. I mean, they feel nice and weighty in your hand. And they've got this kind of sheen on it that makes them, you know, for a guy like me who never paints miniatures, I think it's really, really great that they've made them just not like some kind of dull uh, plastic, but have this metallic sheen so that even though I'll never paint them, they still feel like they're really cool on the board. But anyway, yeah, this is a sample of what these guys will look like when they're running around the board. But in this prototype, I'll just be using little cardboard chits, which they sent me. Like I said, they only sent me one of these to demonstrate what it looks like. But boy, I would like to get my hands on a full set because these just look and feel great. But anyway, uh, enough preamble, let's just actually jump into this mission. It's the second mission of the game. It's called X-Play. And in this mission, uh, a local uh, science lab has uh, sent out a mayday to the Galaxy Defense Force that, you know, they're in trouble. Aliens are attacking. Come help. And then, you know, they got cut off and all of that. And so I have actually set this board up as per the instructions in this mission briefing. And this has a lot of specifics, how the map gets laid out, what special things are put on the map, uh, what, you know, what aliens are going to be in play, uh, what kind of items the players have at the beginning of the game. And so I've already set this up. And so what our situation is, oh, and actually I wanted to put my medic here, I think, and my marine there. Let's just change that really quick. I forgot to do this. Okay, so what the situation is, as per setup, we're in a desert base. There are two buildings, this one and that one over there. And somewhere inside this building, there's a signal originating. We gotta go in and find this signal. It's either this thing over here or this thing over here. This is just a standard generic, you know, blip alien symbol that, you know, indicates this could be a human or it could be an alien. We don't really know. So we've got to get into this building and find whoever was sending the distress signal. However, the building is completely shut down. All the security things are in place. And actually, my prototype didn't come with enough of these blocked icons, so I had to use a couple of these no human, which it doesn't really matter. Uh, these represent block symbols. So every single door into this building is completely shut down, and there's one locked door that we'll have to break down to get in. There's two signals in Side, and there's also a couple of aliens in the area. This uh, green spine, uh, spine critter, a blue beta, and a green beta. If I recall correctly, green are tougher than blue. So this is the weakest, and then these are two medium level monsters. And we've started with, uh, Jen and I are playing the game, this is a two player game, but interestingly, this setup said you need to have three characters. So, my biotech, which is a medic, is, is long. Jen's sexy female ninja, her infiltrator is here, and for this, and these are the two characters that we played in a previous mission, but now we've also brought along the Marine, who we haven't played with before, but he is on our team too. And I'll be just controlling my, my medic, my biotech guy. Jen, meanwhile, will be controlling her infiltrator and the Marine, so we have three guys on the board controlled by two players. Okie doke. Is there anything else to mention? Well, there's another building over there, but we don't know much about what's going on other than the doors are locked, and there's a big old turret that is it's jammed. We can't use it right now. Uh, there is an alien gun in this hut out in the desert, which we can go pick up, and there are three spawn points or teleport points. Teleport. Teleport points. You're going to focus. That aliens could pop in you know, as, as they beam down onto the planet in various places. So that's the situation. We got to get in here and find out who sent the distress signal. And so let's get going. 
Now we start, here's a nice handy dandy quick reference guide. Let's just go on ahead and look at this a little bit. So, the first thing we do every turn is we refresh our powers and items. Now, we just started the game so nothing is tapped, nothing is spent, so there's nothing to refresh, so we'll skip that. Then we move on to the strategy phase, where we do four things. We, de we determine who is the first player, or alpha agent. We um, check to see if we can level up. At the beginning of this level, we can't. We um, see if we get any reinforcers from HQ. At the beginning, we won't. And we check to see if we've won. Now, we just started, so of course we're not going to win. So those last three aren't going to happen in the first turn. But the first one, the alpha agent, will be. And I will be alpha agent. So I'll take the first player marker over there. But at the beginning of the turn, you know, what that means is I'll go, and then in a clockwise way, the other characters will go. So it'll be me, and then the Marine, and then the Infiltrator, until we change the player order. Now, one other thing I should say, uh, this getting GD wings, that means leveling up. We just started, we're not gonna level up right now. That won't happen until we start killing some aliens. However, this game, one of the coolest things about it is, it supports campaign play. You can play any of these missions as just a one-off standalone mission, or as part of an epic, I believe, 12 mission campaign that tells this big story. And your characters level up and keep their gear and their level ups through the levels. So, since Jen and I have already had our characters win the first level, I'm coming in, my biotech guy is coming up with a powered up shotgun, a powered up healing gun, a tactic, which gives me plus one hit whenever I try to do anything. And um, Jen is coming up with her powered up samurai sword. She's got, not the regular ones, but the powered up ones. And she's got an advanced tactic too, because these guys uh, have both leveled up a little bit. However, this Marine who is just joining us for the first time, he's coming in as a, as a lowly level one guy. He doesn't have any special stuff. He just has his normal basic stuff. Although I should say we also all have some items. This mission said we can each start with two items. So we've all got some items. Jen's got her satellite strike and uh, a med kit. He's got a grenade and uh, What's this? Oh, some an adrenaline booster, and I've got a smoke grenade, and I've got a deployable sentry. So we've got a bunch of stuff we can do, but enough about that. Enough about the setup. Jen and I are level two, the Marines level one, and it's time to kick some alien butt. So we've done the strategy phase, which in this first turn was really simple. And this is when everybody decides, hey, what are we gonna do? Okay, I'll go take that guy. You follow me, you back me up, you heal me. We, you know, but this first turn, everything's going simple. So we've assigned first player. And now as I'm the first player, we will start doing an agent's turn. First thing in an agent's turn is we can do any of these three actions. It's my turn, my medic. I can move, I can do an action, or I can engage in combat. And during my turn, I can do any of these three in any order I want, although they generally can't interrupt each other. So I have to finish all my movement before I do an action, or you know, I can't move and do some combat and then move some more. They're all, you know, I can do them in any order, but I have to do them all. So I can move around, I can do combat, or I can do some actions. And actions are on the other side of the player aid. Things like bust down a door, search, unjam my weapons, use one of my ta you know, or use, um, you know, tactical redeployment, move around faster, evade, a bunch of, uh, of actions you can do. So, let's look at what I'm going to do here. Uh, see, I'm over here. I'm this. Oh, I'm I'm the biotech guy. Now, what I think I'm going to do um, with my big old powered up guns, I am going to run over here and take out this blue uh, alien, this blue Xeno Beta. And we've already decided that the Marine, who's gonna come over here, and he's actually just gonna stay and start shooting like crazy at this spine critter. I can't shoot at it because my line of sight is blocked by this building. Also, you'll notice, they, they pay, it pays sense to which facing. This is the direction I'm facing. My back is to that Xeno Beta, so I couldn't shoot at me even if I did have line of sight through this building. But my Marine, or I should say Jen's Marine on her turn, he will be, she will be able to make him shoot because he can shoot here, here, here because he can see everywhere in front of him. Jen, meanwhile, she's watching the rear, but I think what she's gonna do is she's gonna run into the building and start searching the building while me and the Marine fight out front. Okie doke. So that's our basic strategy, and let's start doing it. I'm the first player, so I'm going to, I can move, I can do an action, and I can attack. So let's do all three of those things, shall we? First of all, I think I will uh, move. I'm gonna move, now, if, if we're moving, I have a maximum move speed. If I come over here and look at my card, I have eight hit points and four movement speed, so I can move up to four spaces. So I am gonna move 
one, two, and at the end of my movement, I will turn to face this way, so I, you know, I, I can be snuck up from behind, but I'm basically covering this whole area, which means I can shoot at this guy, and if this guy moves out of cover, I could shoot at him as well with my shotgun. So I've only moved two of my four, and I'm gonna stop moving. I could move more, but I'm just gonna stop right there. I've got two more things I can do. I can attack, and I can do an action. I'm gonna attack, let me do my action first. Now, actions, like I said, there's a bunch of them. I can break down doors, I can jump through windows, I can you know, unjam my gun, but I can also use my items. Come over here, I've got two items. I've got this smoke grenade, which hurts bad guys and also you know, disorients them so they can't attack for a while. Not gonna do that, I'm gonna save that for when we need it, but I am going to deploy my cool little sentry gun, which uh, once I've deployed it, it stays still for the rest of the game. It has two ammo, it does a bunch of cool stuff. So I'm gonna put this, uh, my action is, I'm gonna use my sentry gun. So, I take my little sentry gun marker, and I can put it adjacent to anywhere I am. See, actually, you know what? Uh, see, I want to put it here. If I put it here, it has line of sight pretty much, well, it can't get to this alien over here, but uh, you know, between this building and this hill, it can shoot up in that direction. So it can pretty much cover half the board. Uh, it can't quite cover this section over here, but you know, I'm just setting it up right now. So I've set up a sentry gun. That was my action. And so I can't do any other actions. I can't unjam a gun. I can't break down a door. So I've done my movement. I've done my action, which is a sentry gun. Oh, I should also say the sentry gun has, a, uh, has two ammo on it. So I'll just put these two ammo on the little board for it to indicate it's got two ammo left before it runs out of ammo. Once it runs out of ammo, it can never refill. So it has a limited use. And it also has the guard ability. Which, uh, you know, you've seen this in uh, lots of miniature games. It basically means it can actually attack on an alien's turn. So I'll put this over here to indicate that it's ready to do the guard action. And actually, I forgot, um, the Marine, he also has the guard ability as well. So I'll put a guard indicator on him. Now, you remember, you have to remember, these would be like really big, uh, what do you call them? Uh, figurines and these would be nice little tiny cutout shits but again this is just a rough prototype you have to imagine these smaller etc etc but anyway so I got two guards out who can provide you know incidental cover for me so my biotech to review has moved he has done an action and now he is going to do the last of the three things he can do he's going to engage in combat he's going to shoot at this Xeno Beta so let's come over here and look at the particulars of my shotgun. Now this is a powered up shotgun. It's a ranged weapon, I mean, that's what this little bow is. When I attack, I get to roll four green dice. I have a range of up to two areas, and I've got three ammo for it. Do I have my three ammo out? Yes, I do. Let me put my three ammo out so I don't forget. I've got three ammo for it. Also, it has a special bonus ability that if you roll bolts, they count as one additional attack. And also, if, you're, if the target is one area or less away, it does area damage. So, since I'm in this area, and my target is in this area, and I'm shooting at him, if there was anybody else in this area, they would also get hit because it's a shotgun, and, you know, it does, you know, scatter blast stuff, uh, you know, splash damage, it would, it would hit uh, multiple guys. But there's just one guy, so I'm going to shoot at this alien with my barrel shotgun, which means I have to grab four green dice. Although, again, with this prototype, they're really red dice, but you can see they've got little green stickers on them. So these are the green dice. I roll four green dice to do my attack shooting at this Xeno Beta. And kaboom! What did I get? Let's take a look. Okay, I got a hit plus a bolt. And if you remember, the bolt special ability for my shotgun means every bolt counts as a hit. So this is actually two hits. I got an alien, this is a critical failure, so this means um, nothing happened with this die and, and I can't re-roll it. Whenever you get an alien, that just means, uh, that's too bad, so sad for you. I got another hit and a jam. So after this attack is over, my gun will be jammed. Stupid gun. And I got another hit and I have to use some ammo. So in total, for this roll, we ignore this because an alien just means a failure. I got one, two, because the bolt is hit, three, four hits, four hits, the gun is jammed, and I have to use some ammo. Uh, so, I, my gun has three ammo, I lose one of my three ammo tokens, and it's permanently gone unless I can find some more ammo. So eventually my gun will run dry, but you never know exactly when, because there's this kind of random element to it. So I've lost some ammo, my gun is jammed, hold on a second. So I've got to take the jammed icon and put it on my gun over here to indicate it's jammed, but I can unjam it later. But before jams, I did four 
uh, I got four hits against this alien. And now whenever any, whenever anybody, an alien or an agent, a hero, gets hit, they get to defend. They get to roll as many dice as equals the number of hits. So since I hit him with four, the alien gets to roll four defense dice, which are these blue dice, or you could consider them white because again, they're the prototype. So I'm gonna roll four defense dice and see what I get. Pop. Right, so, oh, this is a very bad roll for the poor alien. What he wanted to roll were shields. Let's see, he got, this is a hit side. He wanted to roll shields. And there's quite a, there's several shields on here. It's a 50, or almost 50 50 chance, but he got no shields. So when he's defending, the hits do nothing. The ammo does nothing. The bolt might. Let's see, he is a blue Xeno beta. So we have to look at his card, where we look at his defense. His defense says whenever he rolls a bolt, he can regenerate one hit point. He has four hit points, by the way. So that bolt he rolls means he gets to heal. However, he hasn't been hurt yet. So right now, that's not going to help him. So that bolt didn't do him any good. He rolled no shields. So actually, that's a, an awesome first start. I did four points of damage. All four of my hits got through and smacked that guy around. He had no defense. And since he only has four hit points and he never got a chance to regenerate because the regenerate happens before the damage, he's dead. I, right off the bat, boom, first turn, right out of the bat, took out this little guy. So he is now removed. And what that means is, because this turn, somebody on our team has taken out an alien, next turn we will have the chance to maybe, if we get lucky, level up. So I'll just put him over here as a reminder on the, uh, on the star player marker that we have to level up on the next turn. So those were, that was my whole turn. I moved, I did an action, which was deploy a gun. Um, by the way, does this gun have line of sight? No, the gun, unfortunately, does not quite have line of sight to this alien, but the gun could start shooting this alien when it moves around, so we'll see what happens. So I attacked, okay, so that was the end of all my actions. A movement, an action, and a combat. So now it is the alien's turn, where first we draw a close encounter card, activate aliens based on what the encounter card says, and um, you know, and then the aliens teleport, move, or combat, again, based on what aliens get activated. So let's go through that right now. Um, this happens at the end of every player's turn. So I will draw a close encounter card. This deck was pre-set up based on the, the rules for, for this uh, encounter. And what will it be? It will be kill the leader. Activate all aliens assigned to the alpha agent. Okay, so we, gotta, we have to do this. Now, first of all, I forgot. Uh, that blue guy we killed, this was the card that was devoted to him. This card is gone because he's dead. So, I am the alpha agent. Every card that is assigned to me, and a second ago, I had two. That meant both of these aliens would have activated. But since I've just taken this guy out, only one alien, this green beta, is going to activate this turn. That's what kill the leader is going to do for us. So... And that means um, over here, you know, the, the alien that's assigned to Jen, the spine critter, is not going to attack this turn. He's just going to hang out. This guy over here is going to hang out. But this green guy is going to make a move. So now we have to look at his AI and see what he wants to do. And there's a series of things he'll check. First of all, if there's anybody at zero distance directly next to him, he will run away. These betas love to run away and shoot from a distance. However, that's not true. There's nobody next to him, so we ignore that. If there's anybody one area away from him, he would attack and then run away. But there's nobody. He's way over here by himself. There's nobody one area away. Is there anybody two areas away? Let's see, there's him, one area, two. I am three areas away. So there's nobody two areas away. And that's the ideal thing. He, when he's got an enemy who's two areas away, he attacks twice. That's what he always loves to do, but he doesn't get to do that. So since none of these are true, we go to the final, or, oh, I'm sorry, he's got, a, he's got a thing for three areas away. If there's three areas away, which is true, he's here. And by the way, every area is one of these, one, two, three, seven hex points. Um, and so he's in this area, there's area, area, and I'm in this area. There is somebody who is three areas away. So move one area towards the close in agent, agent and attack with a blaster. So he's gonna move one area, and what that means is whenever they move, they basically just, you know, they don't, the heroes, they move around hex to hex, the aliens, they move area to area. So he's gonna move one area and go from the center of this area to this area. So he's just moved, and now he's two areas away from me and he's going to attack me with his blaster. So we look at his blaster. His blaster gets to roll three green dice and it has no special abilities. So he's gonna roll three greens to attack me. Da, da, da. Attack! And what do you get? He got the GD, which is no good for him. That's only, this is our level up, so it means nothing right now. He has a jam, but alien guns never jam, but he's got a hit 
and he's got another hit and a lightning bolt. Now remember, this guy, has his, his gun has no lightning bolt abilities, so this lightning bolt means nothing, but the hit still counts. So, he has gotten two hits on me, and this one didn't count. Now that means on defense, I get to roll two defense dice. So I'm gonna roll two dice. And, you know, and it's basically however many hits you know, somebody has on you, you have that many chances to avoid the dice. So let's see what I get. Ta-da! Oh, and I got a shield. So that means the shield cancels one of these hits. So boom. And then the other thing I got was a hit, which is no good, but a lightning bolt. So let's look at what my lightning bolt does. My armor says whenever I, when I'm doing defense, if ever I roll a lightning bolt, I automatically heal by one. However, I'm not hurt right now. If I was hurt, I'd get a, qu a quickie heal. But since I'm not, this means nothing. So basically, I rolled one shield, one point of damage got through to me, and I can put it on my little thing over here, you know, or I can put it on my character card. I've got eight hit points total. Where's my hit points? Yeah, and I've just taken one point damage, so I'm down to seven. These are just cubes I grabbed from Macau, um, again, because of the prototype. Okie doke. So that was that was um, a very simple example of an alien's turn. You know, first they do their movement stuff, and then they, you know, and then you do whatever they say. You know, if there was nobody within three, I was three. If there was no, if I hadn't moved to be within three of him, instead he would have had to move up to one area towards the closest agent and then use regenerate. So if he was hurt, he would slowly heal himself over time. So these guys heal over time. They always try to keep their distance and shoot with their blasters. That's what this guy does. And that's what he did. So now we come back over. So my turn was, remember, I did my battle stuff, my movement, action, combat. Then I've done the alien. I drew an encounter card. The, I chose which aliens to activate, which was that green guy. And then they did their movement and combat stuff. And now it's Jen's turn. And she will do the same stuff. She will do it for her marine and for her infiltrator. So that means, you know, after the marine moves, uh, because we're going clockwise, the aliens will get a chance to attack again. Then after the infiltrator moves, the aliens will get a chance to attack again. And then finally, after all that, we will draw an event, which is those white cards over there. I'm just going to skip and show you what the event might be. The event, oh, it's a special event A, which means it's a story-based event, which means a bunch of stuff happens. I'd have to read about it in the instruction. But at the end of the turn, an event happens. And these could be all kinds of stuff. New aliens could teleport in. The weather could change. There could be an acid storm that starts hurting us if we're outdoors, so we want to get indoors. All kinds of stuff could happen. So, um, actually, I'm not sure if there's an acid storm. I know there's an ion storm. But anyway, I, you know, again, I, don't, I haven't looked through all the cards. But weather could change. Aliens could attack. You know, it could be an all-free care. Or story events could happen. Now, that's going to happen. So, there is going to be a story event that happens after all of us have taken our move. But it's at 20 minutes right now, and I've shown you one move. I moved, I did an action. Oh, 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 you know what? I, I should show you one more thing. Um, because when this alien moved out here to attack me, you know, he attacked me and he did one point of damage, I'm going to activate my turret guard ability, which means this goes away, but it'll refresh. He'll get to, he, only can, he can only guard once per once per round. So he's going to guard, which means he is going to automatically attack a creature that it recently saw moving or spawning. So I come back over to my gun. My gun gets to... Now, I could wait. I could have my gun wait and see if this spine critter would walk around, and then the gun could shoot at it. But I'm just going to go ahead and have it shoot at that alien. So the gun gets to roll three green dice, has a range of three, which means it'll shoot it, and it has two ammo. So let's go on ahead and roll three green dice and see what the gun does. Boom! Alien roll, that's crappy. One hit, a second hit, plus ammo. So it lost one ammo and did two hits. So my gun's already down to half its ammo, so that's not a really great start. But maybe it'll hold on for quite a while with the remainder of the ammo. Did two hits, so this alien gets to roll two defense. Let's see what he does. And he rolls a shield, and he rolled a hit. The hit means nothing, the shield means he cancels one of the two, so that alien just took one point of damage. Now he might heal it later, but he has one point of damage, and it's, it's going to take four to take him down. Okay, so, right, that was the end of my turn, now it's Jen's turn. Although again, that guard could have happened at any given time. So I've shown you the basics, a quick run through. If you would like to watch a little bit more, if you'd like to see what the Marine does, what the Infiltrator does, if you'd like to watch us break into this building and rescue some scientists and have a story event happen, etc., etc., go on ahead and um, you know continue watching by pressing the extended gameplay button on the screen right now. Alternatively, if you just want to go to some final thoughts, you can push the other button and you can hear what, I, what Jen and I think about the game. Either way, you can make a choice in five, four, three, two, one. Thanks a lot, everybody.